Hi, this is David Gagnon here with um, the expansion team in Meeting Room 5 uh, in the EXP Cloud Office. Uh, today's guest is Marguerite Crispello. Uh, Marguerite, welcome. Good morning. Thank you for having me today. Absolutely. So, you know, during this segment, what I try to do is, uh, you know, find uh, uh, interesting people and, and uncover their story on how you, they ended up here and then what their process and, and success and tips are as far as growing their revenue share group. So, so let's start a little bit uh, you know, about you know, who you are, where you're from, what you were doing before you learned about EXP. All right, well, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, just a quick warning, I live in the country and I'm at home today, which is one of the things I love the most about the cloud. So you might hear chickens and roosters and dogs in the background. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one thing I love the most. But uh, so a brief background on me: I, I got into real estate 23 years ago. A to do loans. My husband was in the mortgage business, and we had a small son, and I was looking for something to be flexible. You guys might remember the days of those uh, all-time low eight percent interest rates, right? <laughs> And I did loans for about a year and decided that that wasn't for me. I didn't really like the loan aspect. So I went to work as an assistant for an REO broker. So it was funny that you were talking about an REO a little bit earlier. And uh, his phones would go crazy and I'd answer the phones and uh, people would want to see houses. And I'd say, what do I do? And he'd say, go show them houses. <laughs> I'd say, okay. And they'd say they want to write offers. I'd like, what do I do? He goes, go write offers. And I ended up selling 18 houses in my first six months and thought, huh, I think this real estate world is for me. Well, like most uh, probably young, overconfident, quickly successful people, I thought I knew it all and thought I would go open my own independent brokerage because brokerages make all the money, right? That's where all the money comes from. Or so I thought in my mind. And so we opened Realty First in January of 1996, and I spent about the next 10 years trying to build that brokerage. I'd get a few agents, I'd lose a few, I'd get a few. Meanwhile, I was producing uh, myself at, at a pretty high level. I was doing 100 plus homes a year. And then the market crashed in our area, 2006 came along, and everything kind of went to... Uh, hell in a handbasket, so they say, right? And I started doing REO. I thought, okay, well, that might be a direction that I could go. And also thought, well, REO is going to be a short-term gig. I really thought it would only be like a three to four-year uh, venture. Of course, none of us had it, did, but in the meantime, I kept thinking I need to have a backup plan. What can my backup plan be? And so we thought, well, let's go buy a franchise because franchises uh, are even more where it's at. <laughs> and so 2009, we bought a South State franchise out of Florida. And we spent the next five years building that franchise to about 120 agents. And a big part of how we did that, which I'm also utilizing now in EXP, and I'll finish my story, but... Uh, we did a thing called Tuesday tune-ups where every Tuesday from 12 to 1, I would do uh, what we now call lunch and learns. I would do a lunch and learn at my office where I would train on a variety of different topics. And so I started doing that. We built that brokerage to about 120 agents. Well, then the end of 2014, as kind of REO started to fade away, I started to really look closely at our numbers um, I looked really closely at our numbers, and when I pulled my personal production out, the company was losing money at a rapid pace. In other words, I was paying so that all these agents could work at our brokerage. We had three offices, 8,000 square feet, uh, copiers, printers, <laughs> you know, coffee machines for agents to stand around, um, and all kinds of of things that were costing us well over a hundred thousand dollars a month in overhead. So the end of 2014, my uh, husband was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease and honestly just the stress of running the large brokerage, dealing with compliance and agents and claims and issues and all kinds of stuff, we decided to get out of the franchise. 
to January 2015, we shut down our franchise, went back to being an independent brokerage. We kept about 20 of our agents, basically the ones who said they wouldn't leave us and that we're producing, and went back to being independent. And to be honest with you, I had no intentions of ever, 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 never say never, joining another company. I didn't see the value. I didn't see any reason why I would... I would have uh, any reason to join another brokerage. I got recruited by you know, the Beth, Mega Camp, and Family Reunion, and Remax R4, and lots of things. Um, and none of them really settled with me, really um, felt like the right thing to do. And then I got a call from Brent Go. Most of you guys know Brent. Uh, he is right here in my market in Roseville, California, and he's been a good friend of mine for many, many years. And he said, hey, I'm leaving KW, and I would love for you to check out this new company. I said, thanks anyway, Brent. Uh, I have no interest. You know, like I said, I've been recruited by everybody. I, I'm, I'm really not interested in joining any company. And he said, please, please, please just watch a webinar. I said, okay. So he came over to my office. We had lunch. The next morning at 8 a.m., I grabbed my husband, went over to his office, and watched the webinar. And about 10 minutes into the webinar, I had like these loose pimples on my arms and I said, wow, this is, this is something different. There's something here. But again, because I was so hesitant from my previous experiences, I was like, I don't know. So I started kind of checking things out, talking to people. I got the opportunity to speak to Vicki uh, Bartholomew and uh, some of the other leaders and spent some time getting to know them. And, a few days in, I said, you know what, this really is the future of real estate. Uh, I was sitting home one night, I'd uh, gotten an invite to come into the cloud, and I was kind of playing around with it, and my 22-year-old comes in, and I, I was trying to figure it out, and he goes, oh, mom, it's just like, you know, whatever game he was playing, <laughs> and he goes, use the arrow keys, use the F4, use the, you know, he was showing me around, and honestly, at that moment, I looked at him, and I was like, huh. He's the future, right? My children are the future, and this is definitely uh, the future of real estate. So I personally, in my 23 years, and having looked at just about every single model that I could possibly imagine exists, uh, truly think this is the best thing ever, and it's continued to get better uh, on a daily basis. I mean, you know, we've had some of our growing pains, but... I mean, what company out there goes from 2,000 to 4,000 agents in like seven months? It's just not even realistic to think we wouldn't have growing pains. Um, but uh, I think that it's, it's really the best thing out here. I mean, the opportunity for me to stand right here in front of you, home in my pajamas, <laughs> uh, and be able to talk to people like you all over the country is so incredibly powerful. and. I think it's such a huge opportunity, honestly, for all of us to be able to connect on a much greater, one of my goals in doing training and stuff like that was to be able to get out of my backyard. I mean, I'm pretty well known in my little tiny corner of the world and my market, but once I, you know, cross the border of our city, no one really knows who I am, and, and I really don't always have the ability to connect with people like you all over the country without, you know, hopping on a plane and flying out and spending a boatload of money on hotels and travel and everything else. So I think it's about the coolest thing I've seen and uh, I cannot imagine being anywhere else. Um, so that's my story, a little bit about who I am and, and my background. And so I thought I'd see what kind of questions you might have and then we can go from there, huh? Yeah, that's fantastic. So my first question for you, Marguerite, is, um, you know, you, you said in the first 10 minutes of hearing the EXP story, you had goosebumps and uh, you were very interested. What were the key things that you heard in that first 10 minutes? So a few things that I would say is that, first of all, uh, the thought of not having, of being able to bring agents on anywhere in the country, which huge to me. Not only to bring them on, but not have to, uh, so to speak, manage them, right? And have to deal with compliance issues and those things was hugely attractive to me. 
so that was attractive. The revenue share and frankly, the stock was attractive to me after 23 years of being in the real estate business, uh, building an independent and a franchise brokerage. After we shut down the brokerage, we were in pretty significant debt. So no debt, no retirement. I mean, tons of debt, no retirement. <laughs> And when I looked at EXP and I thought, huh, and I, if I could have spent the last five years that I spent building a franchise and put that energy into building uh, EXP with agents that I could, you know, support and help train and, and have stock and revenue share, um, I'd, I'd be on an island somewhere sipping my ties. <laughs> yeah. um, so that was hugely attractive to me. And the other part that was attractive was really – exactly what I'm doing here, having this opportunity to talk to people uh, all over the country without, you know, going broke and traveling and spending time away from my family. Those things were all really attractive to me. I gotcha. And so, um, um, you know, Brent, I think Brent's only been here seven or eight months at this point. How long have you been here? So I joined about two weeks after Brent did. I was one of the Gotcha. And um, uh, tell us a little bit about your success with your expansion efforts so far uh, with, um, you know, your direct uh, attraction numbers as well as your team size. So I haven't quite hit the levels that Brent has. He's a mad dog. I love him to pieces. Uh, he's, he's been able to focus a lot of time on it. But I do have 23 people on my personal um my first line, and I have about 52 total in my group. So not quite as huge as some of the other uh, people out there, but it's big to me. Um, I got license plates to say thanks EXP because EXP has made my car payment for I think the next two and a half years now um, in revenue share. And so a big part of um, uh, what I do is I spend – uh, I do webinars, so I do webinars for guests to come on that were um, originally developed, I think, by uh, Rob Flick. So I do those webinars on a weekly basis. And honestly, the majority of my time has spent uh, just saying the servers down. Can you guys all hear me? Uh, we can. Keep on going. Oh, all right. Um, a, a part of my time has really been mostly – and reaching out to the agents that I know across, not only in my market, but across the country. And I keep it very simple. I say, hey, you know, I'd love to uh, tell you a little bit about this new company I joined, and I'd love to get your opinion and feedback. Would you mind watching a short webinar? And either I get them on a webinar when we meet myself or someone else in our group, or I will do it myself where I'll actually uh, – go through the slides with them and explain the things that I loved and I saw. Um, I have people now in my revenue team in Chicago, Illinois, and Little Rock, Arkansas, and I'm working on a couple other states. Gotcha. Fantastic. And um, um, about how long is uh, your version of the presentation? Well, I try to keep it to 35 minutes. so. I usually will start by telling my story that I that I just told you guys, um, and then I'll go through the rest of the slides, which talk about you know all the features of EXP. I try, you know, I think that there's a little bit of backlash right now on um, the revenue share aspect of EXP, and I don't. My personal opinion is I don't want that to be a hundred percent of the focus because there are so many other great things that this company has to offer, such as masterminds like this and networking and, um, you know, even things like Skyslope and tech support. And there's so many great things about this company that I think sometimes we have a tendency to focus on, you know, just revenue and stock. But I'll tell you what I know about agents in, in my career of having brought them on and teaching them is as much as we like to think it's about the money, it's not about the money for the majority of the agents. Now, there's business-minded people, like many of us that are here in this group, where that is a huge part of the focus. 
But for really 90% of the rest of the agents out there, that's not the number one focus. They want support. They want connection. They want help. And um, my brother, who, who's the CEO and runs a, a big company, he says, um, people start looking because they're not happy. People will leave for the money. If they don't originally start looking just to make more money, they will start to look because they're not happy where they are. And they're not happy because, A, they're not getting, you know, the support or the recognition that they want, you know, training or systems or processes. They're not getting those things. But then ultimately they'll leave because they can make more money down the street or uh, the financial opportunity. So I think we need to spend just as much time talking about all of the multitude of attributes and the support because one thing that I hear people say is well I need to be around people so they think that when we are here in the cloud like this that we're not around people they think we're not around human beings or connecting or in, in any way and real estate agents for the most part are very social creatures and we want to be around people we want that water cooler time so to speak in a lot of ways and so either A, building that community somewhere in your own markets uh, or on top of that, paying attention to um, what kinds of activities they can do to get involved and what kind of really networking you've been able to do since being a, a part of EXP. Somebody just had a question. Um, how do you approach a 95 to 100% REMAX agent to go to 80% split? So I'm always fascinated percent commission because let me ask you how any company can give a hundred percent of their money to anybody and still operate it's not reality the truth is a hundred percent is not a hundred percent in other words take your paycheck and look at the bottom line right and the way I'll explain it is I'll say okay so you're gonna go talk to mr. and mrs. seller today on a listing and you have three offers on the table and all three offers are $300,000, which is the list price of your home. My question to you is, can each one of those $300,000 offers net something different to you, Mr. Seller? We could have one offer that uh, pays $5,000 in closing costs for a buyer. We could have one offer that uh, doesn't allow any, doesn't request any closing costs. We can have one offer that has a 20, uh, a 50-50 split on your title and escrow fees or we can have one offer that charges a $500 transaction fee. Every offer is different to the bottom line. And so just like real estate companies, they're, it's not apples to apples. You have to compare apples to apples. So sure, you're Remax on 100%, but Remax charges a desk fee of, I don't know what it is, check in your local market. But I compared to one agent who was paying $17,000 here to be at her Remax office, which did not include the charge, their franchise fee or their percentage, their whatever that amount is that they charge off the top. They said, okay, great. Let's actually look at your most recent paycheck, the most recent stuff. And off of a $10,000 commission check that she received, she'd actually only received $7,200 because of all the miscellaneous fees here and there. She had to pay I mean, we have an independent brokerage here that's one of the largest in the country called Lion & Associates. They charge their agents $1,850 a year for e and and they have to pay it in January. So you really understand apples to apples. There is no such thing as 100, 100%. Even like we have a company in our market called Realty One Group. Uh, it's a franchise as well. And they're like, oh, you get 100%, but they charge a flat fee. Okay. So they charge a $495 flat fee. And on top of that, if the sales price is above, I think, $500,000, that fee goes to $795. And then you're required to use their transaction coordinators at $395. And then if you have an office, you pay a $800 desk fee. And then, I mean... That's my point is it's like this it's like this quirky misnomer that the agents are idiots. And so they say, oh, you're getting 100%. Like if, if anyone's believing that they're getting 100%, they're getting 
then they need to go back to math class. Um, not to be really rude or blunt, but that's the reality is those numbers are not those numbers. And with that on top of that, let's just play around for a moment. So sure, you can get 100% at your company or maybe they charge a, a lower cap or whatever that is. Do you also have the ability to earn more than 100%? Does that company revenue share on the agents that you attract? Is that company also offering you stock to build some sort of retirement? So I think that people that only focus on, oh, I'm getting 100% or I pay this are very short-sighted. Um, and Terry brings up a great point. I was getting 100% of the brokerage I owned. Um, same thing for me. I have earned more money in the last seven months in revenue share than I think I earned uh, the entire five years almost that I owned a, a, a franchise brokerage. So without all the headaches and the hassles and compliance and all that junk. Um, so keeping in mind, you guys, that again, 90% of the agents out there with all due respect, do not have any kind of business sense. They have no idea what their numbers are. A perfect example is you ask them, hey, what did you throw on your tax return? They go, oh, I have a great accountant, and they wrote everything off. So I didn't make any money last year. I didn't have to pay any taxes. They said, well, you realize if you wrote it all off, that means you actually spent it. <laughs> um, so you spent it on expenses or you spent it on something. So at the end of the day, you have no profit. So uh, I'll even give a quick scenario, and I apologize if I'm rambling, you guys can cut in any time, but uh, a, a quick example of how I ex explain this is revenue share. So here's how profit share works, uh, Mr. Agent. Profit share says that you take the gross revenue that comes into the company, and you deduct all of those expenses. So you deduct bricks and mortar office locations. For example, in our market, we have one of the largest KWs in the country with over 25,000 square feet of bricks and mortar. On any given day, you can walk into that office and you'll see 20, 30 agents out of their 500 that are under that brokerage. So that brokerage has all these expenses. In fact, they just did a $250,000 remodel to their 10-year-old office. All of that is out of the expense, part of the expenses. And out of the bottom drops a teeny, tiny, tiny pile of profit. Take that pile of profit, you cut it in half. Half goes to the owners of the brokerage, which are not the real estate agents, by the way. And the other half gets divided between the real estate agents. I know from running a brokerage, there is very little to no profit. The average brokerage out there, the only way that that brokerage office makes any money is because the broker is an actually producing agent and broker and he is contributing part of he or she is contributing part of their money to keep the doors open in that brokerage it's all about ego it's not about true numbers and bottom line so that's some of the education that you have to help uh, agents understand a little bit but again i go back to my first statement most agents don't really care about the money they care more about the social environment the support and the opportunity uh, for leads, the opportunity for uh, other things, then they do care about the money. Because truly, if, if most agents actually knew what their true numbers were and could see a true profit and loss, most of them would get out of business. <laughs> so um, definitely brokers would. But most brokers stay open more because of ego than actual profit. And so, we, and so when you were talking about were profit talking share, about you were talking specifically about uh, Keller Williams. And then uh, just share a little bit about how do you talk about uh, revenue share? So the way that I explain revenue share is uh, we get the opportunity to help and support each other like no other company that I've seen. And with that, we are here to help bring agents onto the company to attract them to this company and to show them all the opportunities that are here and help them in whatever way we're able to uh, contribute and build their business. And for that, we are rewarded with revenue share. And revenue share is money that actually comes off the top. It's that big pile off the top, not that little tiny pile off the bottom. And we're able to do that because 
we don't have the exorbitant amount of expenses that the old-fashioned bricks and mortar off path we're able to share that revenue with our agents and help support all of us and and do you get into what those payouts are at all and if so uh, what's your dialogue around that so I do a little bit I'll basically try to break it down and say you know for each agent that we personally attract we uh, get twenty eight hundred dollars up to a sixteen thousand dollar cap we get up to twenty eight hundred dollars and from there guess what those agents also have the same opportunity that we do those agents are have the ability to go out and attract great agents and as each one of them attract those agents we also get to share in that revenue at all of those levels down to seven levels deep and many people will say oh that's an mlm well guess what it is a multi-level uh, component to it but we're not selling seeds and vitamins, lotions and potions and travel packages, we're doing what we already do, selling real estate. And previously that revenue only went to the brokers of the company. And now because our expenses are not uh, exorbitant like bricks and mortar, we're able to share that revenue with you, our agents, as opposed to all of that money going to the brokers. All right, and and Donovan, I saw that you had a question um, on the time-tested uh, factors. I'm going to do that as a separate um, a piece at the end of the interview. Um, I'll add that to the other two. Um, let's open it up for questions for Marguerite um, uh, on what she's doing to help grow the company through her revenue share group. I have a question. This is Reg. Go ahead, Reg. So, Marguerite. Just told my life story from my Remax franchise. Um, so what I would guess I would say is, I'm only too aware of the brokers that need the coffee machine in the office, and and the market has trained them into that environment, um, and it does require a level of business savvy to understand the logic and just the superiority of our model. But when you look at brokers that you're trying to entice or attract do you have a demographic that you just i mean i'm trying to explain to a horse to drink the water and it's not working um and and we've spent about a half hour here discussing the whole thing it, it, it seems all logical to us but do you really split off a demographic that you just don't go after so you know some of it is sadly it is a little bit age related um i'm 53 years old and it seems that some of the people who've had their brokerage for 25 30 years and that are you know maybe a bit older than me are less open to ideas and suggestions they're like oh we've seen that come and go that's not that's a you know passing phase you're like okay and i just move on um what i find is i do find there is a little bit of an age demographic in some of the younger ones. But what I've also sat down with some is I've said, you know, what are your biggest frustrations as running a broker? You've now been doing it for X amount of years, however long that is. What are your frustrations? And when you can hear what their biggest frustrations are, we just about all have a way to um, handle those objections, right? So uh, those are the kind of things that you um, you have to really pay attention to what is most important to them. And I think that the moment you call, many of them are on defense because they think they're going to be recruited. And so a lot of times, especially if it's local people, say, hey, I'd love to just you know go to lunch and pick your brain. Um, I'd love to learn a little bit more about you and your business. And let them talk. I mean, we're all really good at talking. Right? So, you know, let them talk and they will tell you what their biggest frustrations are. And for example, I have a, a small brokerage. He was one of the first ones I contacted, a guy named Kevin Caps, Kevin and Carolyn Caps of the Caps Group. And they had about 10 or 12 agents. And I went and I sat down with them and I said, you know, what is your guy's biggest frustration in running the brokerage? They're like, the amount of time that is wasted by stupid questions, they said. <laughs> 
uh, respectfully I say this, um, by their agent, who are not doing anything anyway. Those agents haven't sold a house in the last year or haven't sold a house in the last, you know, eight months. And then when they finally sell something, it's so much work and so much headache because it's like they're starting from scratch, right? And so they ended up deciding to join EXP. They only brought four of their 10 agents with them. The rest were either non-producers or time wasters that they didn't want to bring. And when I talked to Kevin just last week, he said that they have made more money this year, not only being able to produce themselves, don't have to spend so much time managing agents, but they're also getting revenue share. And they just have a few agents. They haven't even really spent much time building their revenue share, but just the freedom that it gave them, they said they did more business in the first six months of this year than they did, uh, than all of their agents did the entire year last year. So I think for many small brokerages even, just the freedom that you get from not having to maintain and manage all those agents is a huge piece. But you have to see what's most important to them. Like, honestly, if you had come to me probably a year before this, I wouldn't have even considered it. So remember that timing and circumstance change everything. So no once doesn't mean no forever. Uh, it could be somebody that you talked to six months ago, you just stay in contact with them, and you never know. All of a sudden, one day, they're like, today is the day I've had enough. And they end up coming and, you know, part and joining you. Um, Donovan, you said, do you do weekly meetings, calls with your revenue share tree to help them grow? So I don't do weekly uh, calls. I actually have the list that I carry with me all the time, but I actually love that idea. So I'm going to steal your idea, Donovan. Um, I actually carry that list with me at all times in my, uh, in my day timer. And I call, text, check in. Uh, meet with them if I can, help them contact people, that kind of thing. But that's actually, your idea is better. <laughs> All right. Well, fan right. fantastic. fantastic. Um, Mar Marguerite, if uh, people were looking to place a referral uh, to you from across the country, uh, what areas do you cover? So I'm in the greater Sacramento market. So I'm in a a little bit east of Sacramento, about 30 minutes, but I work the greater Sacramento, Placer County, Roseville, Rockland, uh, El Dorado County areas is where I work. All right, fantastic. Um, any last uh, final question for Marguerite? All right, Marguerite, thank you so much for coming in and sharing so openly. Um, of course, you're always welcome to come in and join this. Uh, or check out the recordings on my private YouTube channel. But uh, I look forward to uh, chatting with you more. Absolutely. I'll be coming back. I didn't even know about this. Group, so I'm so excited to be here. I have to run today because I'm going to record it. But uh, I will make it a point to get it on my calendar so I can be here. Thanks a lot, everybody. All right. Fantastic. Thank you so much.